Welcome back to the channel. I'm Corey, and in this video, we're gonna talk all about electrical. Now, I had to piecemeal some of my electrical system because I wanted different parts to be ready um, kind of as I did different things. Like, for example, I went ahead and built like the very basic part of the electrical system when I installed the air conditioner because I wanted to be able to use the air conditioner. So, um, in this video, we're gonna really talk about everything you need to know about building an electrical system, and uh, let's dive in. Let me show you what we did as far as lights go. I bought these little puck lights off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I mean, they're just uh, really simple. I mean, it's just a little um, little puck light. It's got a it's got a top. There's a little piece of plastic here, and behind it there's some LEDs. So they're really energy efficient. They run on 12 volts, and there's a positive and negative wire that comes out the back. Now this top part right here that you see is black. It was white originally, and what we did is we painted them black. So let me show you. I took them all apart and I. Um, we unscrewed them all, we just laid them all, and we spray painted them. You know, nothing, no, no real science to this. I just used this uh, Rust Oleum Flat Black Paint and Primer all in one. Just make sure you get some something that'll work on metal, and it says it works on metal. It's a simple spray paint. I've also never used one of these kind of fancy uh, spray paint things with the with the gun. I will say it was kind of easier to do that. Um, but anyway, relatively simple. I'm just going to screw all these back together now. All right, the next thing we're going to do today is start working on some of the electrical stuff. Um, and kind of putting this off for a little bit. And I think it's finally time to do that because we got our mini split air conditioner. And the plan is if we can get a really basic shore power electrical system going, um, we can have air conditioning while we do a lot of the inside work, which would be really nice because this crazy heat wave is really bad. I mean, it's over 90 degrees in the afternoons here and it is hot to be outside working on this thing. So we're gonna try to do that. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is install this uh, little plug that's gonna go just in the wall here. You can see it's just a pretty classic RV plug. This will be on the outside, and it's just, you wire it up from the interior. There's this other little piece, I'm not sure where it went, but it kind of clips onto the back of this here. So we are going to drill a hole in our wall and install this baby. So let's do it. Here's where the test hole came through. That is actually a pretty dang good spot, I believe. So I'm glad that I did it like that. So let's tape it up and we'll drill the real hole. my trailer all right let me show what i got here so um this little white piece is actually two and seven eighths which is really hard to find a two and seven eighths uh hole saw so i had to do it with two and three quarters so i had to take a file and file around a little bit didn't really take much but now it fits in nice and snug i originally wired up my external uh plug my 30 amp plug like the rv plug i manually um, i previously wired this up with some really thick wire and it's really not going to work plugging into my breaker box so i've gone back to just plain old i think this is 10 2 or 10 3 i'm pretty sure so um we'll see you know they kind of say you shouldn't use this kind of stuff in trailers because the vibration or at least in, in vans because of the vibration but i mean i see tons and tons of people doing this and it seems fine so um, i mean i'll make sure it's nice and secure um where i'm in but anyway i'm gonna wire this up right now It's a bit of a moment of truth. We're gonna see if this electrical business I got going is gonna work. So I have my plug here that I've screwed in. And I've got my 
really basic electrical box in here, right? So the Romex comes in, it's black, white, and ground. The black comes in up there and goes into the breaker panel. And then there is a connecting wire that goes from one side to the other. So both breakers can have it. The white goes into that bar, the ground goes into that bar. And then I have a plug-in hooked in here. Hopefully it's gonna work. And when I flip the switch, this is kind of nerve wracking. Hold on, <laughs> back up. Heat, ah, it works. All right, nice. All right, cool. We have power in the camper. All right, next is to wire up the air conditioner unit. And we will also have AC in the camper, so rad. All right, we have uh, our first lights installed back here. See them? Yep. Caitlin's helping me. It's kind of a two-person job to hold these uh, lights into place. You can test it with a nine volt battery. I just have a little square battery on there and you can just see if they work. It's doing good. All right, all the lights are in. We got those three lights right there. Then we have these four lights up here. Now they all work. We don't have them on a switch yet, so that's coming in a little bit. All right, let's do a little bit of electrical wiring. Now, like I said, it's gonna be kind of hard to film some of this stuff because it's kind of dark in here. So uh, we'll just do the best we can. All right, so I got my wiring diagram here and I'm basically just following it to uh, get everything placed. Um, I had to move it all around after I got it placed once. So you gotta make sure you plan exactly where everything's gonna be. So let me show you what I got here. So here I have my breaker panel. Apologies for the fuzziness. I get some more lighting in here. All right, so here is everything I got. So over there, I got the breaker box. The shore power is coming in there. Um, that's gonna go, uh, it goes to this plug-in and that plug-in is gonna go to my DC converter, right? So the DC converter is gonna convert the AC into that and it's gonna go to the battery. Um, and I have my positive and negative uh, um, bus bars there. And then the battery sensor, I have the battery sensor sitting up on the cabinet. Um, but that's where the battery sensor is gonna go. Right here I have my negative circuit breaker, which goes from the inverter here, or the converter here to the battery. And then I have my other circuit breaker over there. So you can kind of see this is where everything I got mounted, and now we're gonna wire it all up. Okay, got all the wiring in place. It's very complicated, but it's very simple when you look at this diagram, <laughs> but it looks really complicated when it's all in here. And uh, it's actually cleaner than you think it is. Um, just gotta move some things out of the way, put some covers on things. Everything is still uncovered for now. And uh, we're gonna flip the breaker and see if it works. All right, moment of truth. See if it blows up. All right, if it didn't blow up, it's a good start. Okay, so we did discover one small problem is the battery monitor. That's this little shunt right here. It actually needs power, and I had to create this little bitty tiny little wire to go behind it to go to the red, um, just so I can get some power to it, which is kind of confusing in a weird place. So I didn't realize that. So now it looks like the battery is charging. It's flashing, I guess that means it's charging. And uh, the amp hours are slowly going up, which is interesting. It's going going up pretty quick. I don't know if that's normal or what, but anyway, Looks like I got it all working. Uh, let me get it all mounted down into place and uh, we'll talk about it. All right, we have lights in here. I did a one circuit just to test everything to make sure it would work. I got a light switch, it's got a dimmer on it here so I can turn up the brightness and turn it down on those lights. And uh, now we can see to do a walkthrough of what we got here. So let me show you what I got. So if we go off of our diagram here, we have the shore power, which goes to the DC converter, right? Because shore power is AC uh, current and we need it to be DC current for the battery. And that's what we did. So let's walk through from the converter on, right? So, so first off to get power to the DC converter, we have a, just a regular plug here. And I actually wired up this plug just to test my breaker panel when I got it all set up, but actually it's in a pretty fantastic place. So I'm just gonna make that the dedicated 
uh, DC power plug, right? And that is on this switch here. So this one is not connected to anything, but that is a 15 amp um, circuit. And that is going to this. Now 15 amp is, is, is way less than this thing is capable of, but that'll give us a, a, good, uh, a good break in the circuit, right? So we're going from the circuit panel to the DC converter. Now from the DC converter, we have this red and black wire in the back here. Now these go to various places. So let's follow the positive first, the red first. So the red is going up to a 60 amp circuit breaker here. This is a marine circuit breaker. It goes from the circuit breaker to the uh, red uh, bus bar here, the positive bus bar, okay? So that's what we do with the power. We take it, we put a breaker in the middle of it to go from the, the uh, DC converter to the bus bar, all right? From the black, we go from the black straight to the bus bar. Now let's walk through the positive first, then we'll walk through the negative. All right, so from the bus bar, we have our connection to our battery here, which is just going from our bus bar to our battery. We have um, coming out of the top there, that is going over to our, an additional circuit breaker right before it gets to our fuse box, right? So that's the power going to the fuse box. And then lastly, there's a tiny little bitty wire here. It's kind of hard to see, but it is going from here to my, uh, uh, this is the battery monitor there. There's a tiny little bitty wire that goes from, that needed to be power to get power to the battery monitor. That's what that is, okay? So backing up a little bit, we go from the uh, DC converter to the, the negative bus bar to the black. Let's look at all these connections. First off, we, let's go from the bus bar to the battery, right? So we go from the bus bar to the, um, this is the battery monitor. So we pass through the, it's a shunt, we pass through the battery monitor, right? So we go from the bus bar to the battery monitor and this black wire goes to the negative side of the battery here, right? And that's, that's how we monitor the battery, okay? Elsewhere, we have a ground wire, that's this one here. Now that is going from um, it's hidden behind the battery, but it goes all the way down underneath and you can see it coming into the bottom of my breaker box. You see that? That's the black wire there in the back that is going into the breaker box and that is plugged into the, the ground in the breaker box. That's how we ground it all out. We also go from the uh, negative bus bar all the way over. You can see this wire here. It goes from this post all the way over and it's going over top of our circuit breaker here and it goes to the top of our fuse box. All right, so that's what this wire is. Um, and I think, I think that's it. Pretty simple. The only other thing I guess is the DC converter it has a little ground wire and I have that running into the bottom of the breaker box. So nothing is covered up yet, nor is it cleaned up. You know, I'm probably gonna move some wires around just so it looks a little cleaner, but all things considered, it actually is pretty straightforward and easy to read and understand. So they will just leave it the way it is. And most importantly, we have lighting. So we actually see what the hell we're doing now. So I'm stoked to get the basics of electrical running in this thing. I have a lot of other electrical to do. I have a bunch of AC um, plugs to do. I have a bunch of devices to run to my fuse box and uh, we will do those things next, I guess. So I got air conditioning, I got lighting. It's starting to feel pretty cushy in here. All right, so this does pretty much conclude the build process of all the electrical. Now, I didn't really film running all these wires, and that would have been incredibly tedious and literally hours of content because a lot of troubleshooting is involved with wiring. You know, you run from point A to point B, and then you got to hook it up and test it, and it's a lot of process, right? So I didn't film all that because it would have you know, doubled the amount of build time and uh, wouldn't have been really fun to watch, right? So a lot of time has passed. We've pretty much finished the trailer now. And, uh, you know, I wanna show you kind of the completed process while the electrical of kind of what we ended up doing. Now, the first thing I wanna show off are the sort of electrical pillars. Now, I got this idea from Van Life Saga and uh, I got one on this side and one on this side as well. And they both have both AC and DC components in them. And uh, let me kind of show you what we got here. Now, I will link most of these products in the description below if you were looking for exactly these things. 
Um, but all my light switches, pretty much for most of the light switches, they have dimmer switches on them. It doesn't flicker like this. This is just what the camera does to it. But um, they all have dimmer switches on them. So, you know, I have lights. These are the ones above the bed and, you know, the above the cabinet lights. And all those are on these pillars. There's some lights there. There's some lights here. And uh, you just run the wire to the switches. And then I do have a couple lights here as well. Um, you know, this is a main light. This is an outside light that I actually have outside of the trailer right there. I have a light on the outside just so you can kind of see out at night if you want to use that. Um, but the pillar is a really nice idea because it allows you to get from, you know, our wiring, which is down there, you know, it goes through the wall and then up through the pillar. And it allows us to get from, you know, underneath the cabinet to into the ceiling to above the um, above the cabinets for the, like these under lights and that sort of thing. So it allows running your wiring really nice and convenient to be able to do that. And the same on this side, the wiring is underneath there and it goes up and into the pillar. And that's really nice. You can hide all of your wiring nicely and it looks nice and clean. And that sort of thing over on this side we have another you know another ac component um a, a socket there we have another one of these little 12 volt sockets there and uh my gauges and i'm going to talk about these more in the plumbing video and you just got to follow the directions in the manual but these are essentially just a couple of water gauges um this is for my gray water tank this is for my black water tank and so on and so forth so then on this side back to this side i have my battery gauges over here as well and uh, my up and down switch for my bed, which I'm gonna talk about in a separate video and another one of these little, you know, um, cigarette lighter type 12 volt um, sockets. Okay, on to some of the other components that we have. Um, I do have my pump is on its switch here. You see, I have my pump down in there and it's wired. The electrical wiring goes over on this side. My pump is over there and that's got its own switch. And that has a gauge for the fresh water tank as well. And I put both of those on the front of the bench here and I control all of my gauges and um, my gray water ball valves. I control those with all of these buttons here and you know, they all light up. You now you can see my gauges up there. They light up when you turn them on, which is pretty nice. This one down here comes on too. So those are all the switches and these two are my gray water dump uh, valves. There are electronic ball valves underneath, which I can show you in a second. And you just flip those on and it opens it up and um, so on and so forth. I don't know if you can hear it, but when you open, turn it on, it opens it up. So I'll show you outside in a second of what that looks like. All right, underneath here, you see I have two ball valves. That's that blue thing right there. You see that one's closed. See the silver in there? That's the closed ball valve. So that switch is currently off. And here's the open one you see, you can see inside the tank, that one is on. So when you flip the switch, it opens up that, and that's how you can dump your tanks from inside the camper, which is pretty nice. All right, moving on to a couple other components. I have an AC port over on this side, and that's where I plug in this little, tiny little toaster oven. This is really nice. It's really compact toaster oven that gets plugged in right there. Um, and this is the fridge. Now, I'm not talked about this in any other videos before, but this is a 12 volt fridge, and you can see the wiring back there there's a little sort of cigarette lighter um, shaped 12 volt plug back there and the fridge just plugs right into that and uh, that white wire over there on the right is the wiring that goes up to get to that socket right there in my shower i do have a couple electrical components there are four lights that are controlled by this switch here and this switch is what turns my lights on and off in my shower and this fan right here is actually also on that circuit as well and when this thing is pushed up, again, I will talk about the fan in a different video, but when this is pushed up, you can push the button here. And that will turn the fan on to vent the shower. And that only works when the light switch is on because it is, um, it is wired into this circuit. All right, one other thing that I did not show in that diagram that you may have saw on paper that I was working off earlier in the video um, that I decided to do later on is because I have so many components both on this side and on this side of the camper, I decided to put a second fuse box on the opposite side. So I could just run from one fuse box to the other fuse box and it made it running the wiring a lot easier. So let me show you that here on this side. This is my main electrical components. You can see my fuse box underneath there and it's not very full. I kind of wish I would have used a smaller fuse box over here. And then I ran wiring from that fuse box into the ceiling over all the way across 
into a second fuse box over here. And uh, this is a much smaller fuse box. I kind of wish I would have done one this side on the this size on the other side. And that is where you know my lights on this side run into um, all my gauges, some of the water pump, all that stuff goes all into um, this fuse box here. And uh, that just really makes the wiring simple to have one on both sides, just so you can wire all your components to one place, you know, or multiple places that are a little closer. A few more things I can talk about while I'm over here. You can also see that is the uh, control board. That little box right there is the control board with the light on it. That is for the linear actuators. Now, those are the devices that make my bed go up and down. You can see it there on the right side of the screen, that little silver um, device. You can see that uh, the pole, if you look behind here, you can see the pole sticking up and it kind of sticks up through there and that raises the bed up and down. Again, I'm going to talk about that in a different video, but that box is what controls all four actuators. Each one is individually wired to that box and it syncs them up and makes them go up and down at the same time. And uh, there's one there. You can see there's one over here. You can see through that crack and there is one in that corner and then one in that corner. So all of those wires do have to be individually wired to um, that box right there. And that's what that is. Next few things I'll show off here. There's a plug on both benches, which you can see there. And I kind of wanted to show some of my wiring just from my battery compartment kind of over there, you know, through my wall, not really through the wall, but it's really on the outside of the wall, but attached. Um, this was a goober mistake, running it on the outside of the actuator there, but I just left it because it's fine. And I have these zip ties with these holes in them you can attach your wiring to things with. And all of those wires kind of just attach to the wall. You can kind of see how they go up the wall there into that, pil into that pillar, um, which is, again, that's why that pillar is so convenient. And I guess I've talked about this in other videos, but you can see I have the fan up above me and it is wired in place too, obviously, as are the lights that are above my head as well. And all that wiring has to be done when you put the ceiling in, otherwise you just can't get to those, um, those lights. So um, that's sort of that. So that's pretty much it. That's all the wiring that I did. Those are all the components that I have in the completed camper. And uh, again, apologies for not filming all the wiring. Like I said, I think it would be pretty boring to watch. Um, you know, the, what's, what's really important is learning all the stuff that you can learn. Now, there's a lot of really good resources out there from the van life community kind of about, you know, how to plan wiring diagrams and that sort of thing. But I did have to invent a lot of this stuff sort of for, you know, a camper because it's a little different in a camper in a lot of ways. I don't have solar on top of this, you know, it's just shore power. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of complicated, uh, you know, something I do want to do with this channel and over on our website, DIYCargotrailer.com is, uh, kind of help folks do some of this wiring themselves. I am going to do like a full video all about how to plan and wire and that sort of thing. And I'm working on a little more professional resources over on the site. And we're going to release that here in the next couple months. Um, you know, if you want me to give you some wiring diagrams, things like that, all that's going to be available over on the site and, uh, be sure to check that out. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you like more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, all that BS YouTube stuff. Um, you know, this has been a lot of fun. All this wiring stuff has been complicated. I've had to troubleshoot a lot of it. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope this type of content is helpful for you guys. And uh, if you're looking for more stuff like this, be sure to drop a comment. I'm happy to answer questions when I can. And be sure to check out the site for more resources down the road. I think that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. May the force be with you.